Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I was trained by training as the information theorist, and I worked at industry for if a you while. Want to buy the microphone. Okay, so I was by training an information theorist, and then I worked at industry for a while. Uh, then I decided to go back, return to academic, and switch my research area to medical electronics. And therefore, the kind of projects that I'm now carrying out in Stanford, um, all of them are spiced up by wireless. So the first project that I'm doing, it is a wireless, uh, is a uh, moving implants that it is wireless control its movement inside the body. And then the second project, it is what we call the endocardial button. We try to cut the wire between the, the, the can that is connect, uh, connecting to the electrode um, that is inserting in the right ventricle of the heart. No more wires, so everything is wireless. Uh, and then in order to move, move along this direction of doing wireless endocardial button for sensing the endocardial signals, uh, we, we have an array of these sensors that is going to the, uh, down into the uh, atri coronary arteries that is running on the surface of the left ventricle to do distributed sensing and we construct the electrical pathway of how signals are propagating from the top to the bottom of the heart. And even a little bit more crazy, we try to build chips that it is wireless chips that is small enough to fit into a biological cell to do intercellular sensing. So all the projects that I'm carrying out at Stanford have the tendency is, is to make the implant smaller and smaller and smaller. And how to do that, it is, um, we think, you know, battery will occupy most of the space of the implants, and therefore the first thing I want to uh, remove in order to achieve miniaturization, it is to remove the battery. And because of my background in wireless, the first thing I come up with the wireless data transmission is the result of the transmission of power wirelessly. Otherwise, we could not uh, receive data. And therefore, instead, we just harvest the power from the wireless link and to support the sensing or whatever activities. And this is nothing new. It applied in, for example, the electric toothbrush that used maybe you know, um, uh, in the daily uh, gadgets. But the problem with those uh, devices, they're using inductive coupling like a transformer operating at very low frequency. For example, right now, you know, these implants that is shown, the example implants that with wireless powering, the carrier, the power carrier, it is one megahertz or lower than that. And because of the low carrier frequency, the devices are very large. They receive antenna. You could tell, you know, the receive antenna, which is the blue coil in the retina implant, or the cochlear implant, the, the disc, which is the same size as the transmit antenna. And therefore, all these solutions that is utilizing wireless powering, we haven't solved the problem of miniaturization. We just shift the problem of a bulky battery to a bulky antenna. And because my background it is, a is a theorist by training, when I tackle this problem, I start from, try to start from as fundamental as possible and start from Maxwell equations. So the speaker, the lunch speaker already pointed out Maxwell equations, so I don't feel too bad just to state two of the equations. <laughs> Um, it's very interesting to learn that when I trace back the history of wireless powering for biological tissues, uh, every paper is referring back to a set of papers that is published in 1970s and early 1970s. And when they do the analysis, they, make the, as they, they think tissue is lossy, which is true. And therefore, they ignore one of the terms that is in Maxwell equations that has dependency on frequency, which is the red terms. And and because of the assumption that low frequency is better, the results agree with the assumptions that low frequency is better. And thereafter, when people implemented the wireless link for biological tissue, they used their results, and thereby most of the system operate at 10 megahertz or below. But actually, we can do better than inductive coupling if we take into account the displacement current, which is the term in red, that is, we do a full wave analysis. And luckily, uh, we are able to derive a closed form solution for what is the optimal frequency that is in terms of the parameters. All the parameters, symbols, grid letters, are just some properties of tissue. And D, it is the separation between the transmitter and the 
and the receiver. So let's see what are the optimal frequency for D. It is one centimeter. That is the implant depth is one centimeter. Um, the optimal frequency for all the tissue types are in the gigahertz range, which is three orders of magnitude higher than the current op the operating frequency for most of the wireless power transmission link for implants. It means that if we can operate at high frequency, the antenna can be smaller. Okay, that's the takeaway point. And because of this research, we perform you know, uh, experiments. We also perform uh, electromagnetic simulation to validate the results. And finally, we implement our circuits to show that it is workable. So we build a CMOS chip that the wireless, uh, the takeaway point it is, uh, our core dimensions, two millimeter by two millimeter, it is able to deliver uh, 140 microwatt of power and it is a hundred times smaller than any previous design the need to chair at the same power transfer efficiency and range. We did nothing but it's just to move the operating frequency to one gigahertz. Uh, in here it is 900 megahertz. So once we are able to harvest that amount of power, what we are going to do with it, we want to make things moving, being inspired by Richard Feynman in his paper. Uh, okay. The idea it is we wireless power a gadget that it is about right now a gadget is three millimeter by three millimeter. We apply the cons when the power it is applied to these gadgets. Th these gadgets will utilize principle like the paddling in kayaking to make it uh, moving in a very energy efficient way. To give you an idea, we have it. I don't know if it works. Hopefully it will work. So you will see it is get uh, like a kayaking, you know, the pattern, the kayak is moving. So here it has a wire. So it doesn't fit in my principle of wireless. So we are going to take our edges tomorrow, a chip that it is, everything is wireless, so the implant device. So the chip is taking out tomorrow, and we are also putting up the test board, uh, the gadgets, the chip, it is one millimeter by one millimeter. The gadget, which is including those, those things that make it like a kayak, uh, it is three millimeter by three millimeter. Uh, wireless uh, powering, wireless control, and the wireless data link for the feedback. So let's see if it works in a few months. Uh, so another thing it is, in wireless, we always talk about distributed processing. Therefore, we work with cardiologists in Stanford Medical School and also part of the medical foundation to do something like um, distributed sensing of the heart to reconstruct the electrical pathway as they uh, see if it will help in the EP study to reduce the surgical time for, from four to six hours to maybe less than an hour. Uh, another project it is we are trying to build autonomous wireless implant that is going to inject in a cell Right now, the cell that we are taking, we are considering, it is a plant cell, which is a spherical 60 micrometer uh, in diameter. So these are the sensors that we are building right now. So we try to break down the project into two phases. The first phase, we build chemical sensors. Everything, it is panary. We remove the bulky electrode with a uh, uh, charge modulator gate. We heavily doted the channel to remove the need of a bias. <coughs> so this is the pH sensor. We also build a pressure sensor on a flexible substrate. But they are large. They are on the scale of one millimeter. It's just not enough to fit in the cell. So at the same time, we build resonators that it is in the scale of five micrometer. Each resonator will resonate at a different frequency. And we are going to put those resonators into a plant cells. Right now, we are using two steps. Uh, micro-injection to inject those uh, uh, resonators in the plant cells. Our goal it is to demonstrate that when we put silicon into a cell, uh, the cells still alive, we can sense you know, the resonant frequency of different cells with different resonant frequency. And at the same time, we try to scale down our chemical sensors and pressure sensors such that at some point we can put the sensors into the cells instead of the resonators. So right now, we are just at the stage of building the sensors and the resonators to do the two-step micro-injection. And that's conclude my talk. Thank you.